I don't want to dress the world. We want to dress the stars. Urban Armor all began with one dress. You know, a friend of ours opened a boutique in Barcelona and asked if we wanted to be involved in some way. Shell was modeling and had a very successful career as a model in Barcelona. So we knew she was going to be in the show and I thought, hmm, let's give her something to wear. So we did this first fabulous painted wood dress. Everybody loved it and it kind of all evolved from there. When you look at the hand-painted pieces, because each one is individually painted with a different motif, I can see Gaudi all over it. I was always taking a piece with me. Well, first of all, he'd wake me up at 3 o'clock in the morning to make sure it looked right. And then he'd have me take it to work with me at 7 in the morning to, because he knew I was working with some famous photographer. He'd want to see if it might get used in the spread. The reason for Shell's longevity as a model was the fact that she continued to transform herself. Most models have a look and exploit it, and when it's over, it's over. Shell managed to be the reigning diva in Barcelona for a good 10 years because she had the ability to be a chameleon. And I mean, she just continued to change, change, change to the point in the end, people were laughing because they, they just, you know, didn't need to see her anymore for castings. They had seen the many faces of Shell. We don't use any fabric. All of our pieces are constructed of alternative materials such as wood, metal, acrylic, rubber gloves, anything, sponges, anything other than fabric. That's just not the point of what we do. So we actually construct the textiles. We build our own textiles and then design garments. If it's acrylic, we have to make sure that it's cut in such a way that the edges aren't raw and aren't going to snag things and scratch people. Then when it comes to actually linking the pieces together, we, we don't use any store-bought materials. The links are all custom-made to our specifications. There's the ordering of the materials, which has to be cut, which we hand drill. Ordering of the links, which we had manufactured ourselves, because it was something impossible to find in this country which we have to open 10,000 or 20,000 of before we can even use the darn things. We drill the pieces and begin to connect them. Sometimes working on a mannequin or a model to, to ensure that the piece actually flows around that part of the body the way that it should. It's extremely time consuming and um, tedious, meticulous work. The materials themselves alone are, are costly. And then the amount of time that goes into the creation of a piece... It's okay. insane. It, it's insane. Could easily be a couple of weeks. Uh, easily. And now the pieces are getting more and more elaborate. There's no telling how long a piece could take. Especially the first one of anything. Could take months. When we're really famous, maybe we'll make a lot of money at this. <laughs> Genart is a nonprofit organization that is really wonderful because they provide a forum for new talent in the fields of fashion and film. I swore that this year we would um, take it, so we came up with some really gorgeous pieces. One kimono, huge. We went really big this time. Last year they were really skimpy minis, and um, this time we decided to do a big old kimono and then this other jumpsuit with a headpiece and uh, you know I want it. I mean we've been chosen as one of five finalists in our category of however many hundred submissions globally you know there were. So it's an honor to just be a part of it. 
And we'll see what happens. Uh, hopefully, we'll leave there having won <laughs> and with everyone knowing what we're doing. I'm um, trying to find numbers for specific, well, any New York contacts, but specifically um, people who rep talent. Like, I just found this Brito agency. They do, um, they rep Foxy Brown and Lil' Kim and um, some other black stars. Barbara, it's Sandy. I'm getting ready to leave for New York. I'm taking the train. That's why I'm leaving now. Um, I just wanted to maybe get a number for you where, you know, where you'll be so we can definitely hook up there or, or I'll just see you at the press party before the show. I think that starts at 7.30. Okay. Love you. Okay. Okay. Talk to you soon. Bye. Big Apple. delayed off to a great start. Just another kink in the mix. See that? I'm not really stressing about it. I'm not stressing about any of this though. So. You know, we've got two days before I'll be at the edge. So this is all fine. We're here on the train at our first stop, and I don't know where, Whiting, Indiana, or something like that. And right now I'm copying down all of that stuff that I madly scribbled on the way out the door um, so that I can do my rounds, go see all these people, or at least call them and try to set up appointments to see them. The uh, attraction to the mirror is exists on many levels for many reasons. On the most simplest level, it's a, a wonderful, dynamic, reflective surface to work with. And it looks great in light and all of that. On another level, it's just the ultimate symbol of vanity, which is such a, which plays such a major role in the fashion world. It's all about vanity. And then on a, a deeper level, it's a matter of um, how it relates to the concept of armor, blinding your enemies. So we're here on Oak Street headed for Elements, where we finally managed to get some pieces into the window for the holiday season, which is a major breakthrough. What's nice about it is they're showing the stuff as interior fixtures rather than fashion. So. It, we installed it ourselves, actually, but it's... Maybe people will finally see it as sculpture. Yeah, that was the idea. From the beginning, the pieces have been um, as much about art as they have been about fashion. Um, they're gradually becoming more and more wearable, but they didn't necessarily start off that way. They were more about pieces of art to be displayed as such. And they, we continue to want them to be displayed as art as well. They're the kind of things that are uh, very theatrical, you know, make that impression, boom, you wear it. I mean, you might even wear it once, you may never wear it. But um, then it's intended to be displayed or uh, installed as a piece of art, as a sculpture. They walk the line between the two. That's that niche that we're trying to find between the art and fashion worlds, where the two meet. If you just take one of a straight panel of one of these pieces and stretch it and hang it in such a in, in any way that your mind might choose to. I mean, you create another shape, another form, yet another piece of art. 
And that's the direction that I've been trying to lean towards for a long time. He's always been about fashion. Um, I've always been more about money. And <laughs> personally, I just, I, I love the art. I've always believed very much in it. I believe in it as a fashion statement, and I, I would like people to appreciate it more as the art that it is. This definitely uh, is not something that's for everyone. It, our market is a niche market, but I find it to be an exciting clientele. It's, you know, people who really like to be out there, be seen, and let it hang out, and, you know, have all the attention, which means, which translates to celebrity type people, which, which also means it's perfect for video, film, stage, all kinds of theatrical applications. Drama, larger than life drama. Larger than life drama. That would be me. <laughs> there are four other finalists in my category, which is women's avant-garde. Last year, I got a feel for what the, what it'll look like and how the production will look and everything, and kind of what my competition. I know what last year it was like. Hopefully, it's not too dramatically different, but. Um, I'm not too worried about the competition. It's more of just nerves about presenting my stuff in front of these people, this particular audience and these judges. I'm pretty confident about it. On time performance into New York City's Penn Station. As our schedule has noted, 3 p.m. We are just a few minutes ahead of 3 p.m. Well, where are your glasses? So we, we have one extra ticket, right? Um, yeah. They wouldn't take it back. Oh. So, the stuff's really out there, and I made it to Gen Arts competition for the second year in a row. Yeah, and it's really, I did some really theatrical pieces for the show this year because I'm hoping to walk away with that prize. <laughs> and I would love for you to see it. I'll have my book and I'll have some other stuff. I really would rather that you see the pieces that I have with me this time, though. I think people perceive me as demanding and it's absolutely the case, but somebody's got to do it. You walk all the way straight to the other end. Then you do something. Then you do your pose. Okay. Don't yeah, rush you, it. Don't, you don't want us to do anything to first. Okay. It'll probably just be a lineup where nobody will be able to see you anyway. That's, that's set, right? Just tell me. Like it or not? Everything has to be right, and what, by right I mean it's got to follow my vision. I'm really not interested in handing it over to somebody else and letting them water it down. Tell them about the show you did recently where uh, there was just one little thing missing. Well, we did this show at a restaurant and we just had one fantastic piece in it. And we were down to the wire doing the piece to the very last minute, taking the paper off, frantic messes, finishing it up. And just as we were putting it on to look at it all together, we realized, fuck! that the choker that went with it should have been all black. Well, we made it black and silver. And just that little detail really threw us off into a... Frenzy. Look at that neck. Look at this. This is beautiful. This is beautiful. Look at that. You see that? That's neck and head. I see that. Okay. It needs a collar on it. Not necessarily. Yes, it does. It needs a black collar. Well, there isn't one, so get over it. I'm not wearing it like this. I don't know why. It looks because beautiful. Because it needs a big black collar on it, that's why. It looks beautiful to me. It really does. But then we realized that it could work. 
Man, there was no choice in the matter. <laughs> what time is it? There's no way in hell. What time is it? The show starts at 8 o'clock. It's 6.25. Did you see how long it took us to put that together? It's not going to happen. Even with all of bust and ass, it won't happen. I'm certainly the more realistic one. Um, he's more the fantastical one. He's the, the one that dreams and sees and has a vision of something fabulous there. But I'm the one that's got to remember, remind him it's due now, that we've got five minutes to get it done, that it's got to be on this person and they've got to be on the catwalk immediately, or that this piece has got one more week to, in order to be finished, uh, or that materials have to be ordered now. He is busy creating and forgets that he doesn't have all day to make that phone call or today and tomorrow to make the phone call. So to show everything to its best, he is a control freak. He starts off with the piece and then he finds the perfect model and or we find the perfect model with the right height, the right look, the right hair, the right skin, the right makeup, the right uh, undergarment, the right shoes. And if it's not all right, then it's all wrong. <laughs> I'm ready, but I'm nervous as hell. I'm just sick. Do what? So what should I do to avoid that? Whew. My stomach has been tossing all day. It's uh, the big day. We're two hours away from the actual competition. And I'm just sick. My nerves are just, my stomach's been tossing all day. Lay down, I can't lay down. We're leaving here in about like 45 minutes. I have to sit here and try to figure out whether I can actually wear this getup that I brought to wear or whether it'll be overkill. And uh, the press party starts at 7.30, it's now 5.45 and I've got to pull it together. <laughs> It's very difficult making a living doing this kind of work. Um, we're carving a niche. We're not following a path. So it's a very difficult road, which in the big picture I see paying off. However, right now, it's very hard. Um, Shell fills it. Shell's our backer. You know. I got a couple extra jobs going on out there. <laughs> <laughs> She's got 20 jobs on the side. <laughs> and that's how we maintain, that's how we stay afloat, paying the bills and keeping supplies stocked and um, a lot of recycling. Paying for photos and all of that is, it's all costly and it's very difficult. Which is do. why we do it all ourselves. I mean, we can't afford to pay a photographer to do it, so we got to learn how to take those pictures ourselves. Uh, we can't pay a stylist to do it, although we were always great at styling anyway. <laughs> so we do it ourselves. This is kind of double 
the interior fixture. Yeah, I'm wondering if I want <laughs> Wonderful. Thanks. I really need a car. I'm sorry, I don't have any here. They're all back at the hotel. I'm great. Wow, you're gorgeous. Thank What's you, darling. Up? I've got the G-strings just in case the girls don't have them. Um, you know what? It's Nora. Let's ask her. Okay. Let's ask her. Oh, wonderful. Oh, oh yeah, you're my model. <laughs> Wear it, woman. <laughs> We didn't win the prize. However, that was a major upset. Um, the crowd was going crazy. The, everybody knew that I should have won it, and for whatever reason, the judges didn't feel that way. There's a certain beauty in um, losing anyway, because it provides me with an opportunity to come back again. Um, Jenner <laughs> will become my annual New York show until I win it. They've decided that they're going to make me the Susan Lucci of the Gen Art fashion scene, or whatever. Um, so I'll be back next year, and I told them that. I just wish I had that check in my hand. It would make life so much easier right now. But it's coming. Cut. In the future, I'd like to continue uh, with these custom wearables and really break them down just to make the details and the, the way they flow just continue to refine all of that. Um, I'd like to see more interiors. I'd like us to, to focus more on the interior end of it because I think that will afford us to be able to continue to seek these special individuals. One's going to fuel the other. They'll fuel each other. True. One will get us a lot of press, which will in turn get us the sales on the other pieces and back and forth like that, hopefully. And specifically, beyond just tapping our market, I'd like to steer 
uh, into the theatrical world, into film and video and stage. To win it, I've got to really be in it, and that means I've got to be in New York. And uh, so now we've begun the process of packing this all up. We're out of here. <laughs> Our uh, award to the Chicago fashion uh, duo, Sandy and Shell Neal.